and where I'm going to try and address as many questions as I can. Um, I'm Mrs Moon, the headmistress. And I'm Mrs Copeman, I'm the deputy head, but I also wear the hat of the early years head as well. And I'm sorry if I don't make eye contact all the way through, it's because I'm looking at the iPad when you're sending your live questions in. So some of the questions have already been sent to us when you've registered for the open morning and some of them will popping up in front. So I'm, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm not making direct contact with you, eye contact with you throughout um, this FAQ section. So the question that many of you have asked is about pupils in the classes and, and what the numbers are of those. And, and the maximum, well, I can't really answer that directly because the uniqueness is that we're so small and we have small numbers per year group. We try to keep those numbers small and manageable and personal for the learner, for parents um, and for the staff as well. It varies in year groups, it tends to be around 12 in the juniors and an average of around 17 in the seniors, uh, but we do believe that small class sizes and uh, small numbers in the class sizes make sure that it contributes to the happiness and success of every pupil in our school. A question that came in um, just a minute ago was about boys um, because it says that what, what do you do um, to get girls to mix with boys? Well actually that's not really relevant from next year because as you may already know we are going co-educational in September 2021 um, and that's from reception down so if your child is in reception or kindergarten from September there will be boys and girls in the class but I do recognise that some parents are quite concerned about the fact that there are only girls on the site and the answer to that is actually we're not girls on the site all of the time because we're part of a group of schools called the Oatree group of schools there are girls and boys that all the other schools in the group are mixed so when we get together for workshops and trips and visits, um, we're mixed um, together with those boys and girls from other schools. We have residential trips, we have day trips, we have camp, um, and it means that we take part in those events with the other schools. Also, we're part of the Independent Schools Association, and that means that schools in the, in the local area or even nationwide have girls and boys, and we mix with those um, in a variety of settings. Um, some of our GCSE subjects are also taught with Normanhurst, which is a mixed school. So I hope that's answered that question. Um, another question that's just come through is about competition. It says here, how do you know what competition looks like because we're such a small school? So I'm going to hand up to you, Mrs. Coleman. Well, we're part of the ISA and there are lots of opportunities for children throughout the school to take part in events and competitions from local to the national scale. Um, it can be sports, art, drama, uh, writing, to name a few. We take part in local sports fixtures and events and competitions with the other Oak Tree schools. Uh, we took part in parliamentary debates, that's our senior children, last year, um, and our pupils were awarded the Best Newcomer Award. Um, but our smaller pupils, you might be thinking as an early years person, well, I'm not sure that my children will be taking part in sports events because they're kindergarten and their reception. But we do have competition in school as well. So they'll be part of a house, every child is given a house, um, and the houses compete against each other in a variety of ways. It might be competitions in the juniors. Um, we had the five pound um, competition where children had to work in their groups and, and design and produce product. Um, and there will be competition within the class as well. Um, competition is healthy, it's important for life um, and we try and give pupils exposure to lots of different events to help them prepare for a life beyond Brayside. Thank you. Um, another question that came in when you were um, registering for the open morning was about the benefits of class sizes. I know I talked about um, what they are but I didn't talk about the benefits of them. Mrs Cummins, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, small class sizes mean that the relationship between staff and pupils is really productive. Uh, the staff know the pupils inside out. Marking's meaningful, it's personalised to the learning of the individual. Verbal feedback plays an enormous part in our teaching because there are small numbers in the class and verbal feedback can be given frequently. Um, and that can be so quick to focus on specific strengths and areas for improvement as the lesson goes on, um, rather than having 30 children in the class and having to wait until you see their work at the end of the lesson and then give feedback the next day. Um, you're actually giving feedback constantly throughout the lesson. Mm -hmm. Um, the pupils get to know each other really well in small classes, they develop lasting friendships that are supportive and, and caring 
um, and that it, it means that Chloe and I as the senior leadership team also get to know every pupil really well and we celebrate their successes in, in a meaningful and sincere way. Mm -hmm. And on that note about um, celebrating success, I just noticed a question that come through actually about what do we do to celebrate success um, and the talents of the pupils um, and we have a reward system here that we use from kindergarten all the way up to year 11 and actually it's been redesigned by the pupils themselves. Um, they have an opportunity to show off their talents and take part in lots of things. Again, the small class sizes contributes to that because it means that if a child is um, you know, displaying a particular talent, we can make sure that they shine in that area and they really excel. We have a house system that Mrs Copeman just mentioned about the rewards um, that we have in the house system. It means it's collective and it's about teamwork, but it's also about individual pupils receiving house points for the work that they've done or for upholding the aims and values of the school um, or just generally being a nice all-rounded person and, and friendly and kind. Um, pupils redesigned the reward system during the first lockdown period last year when they wanted everybody in the school to have the same system and now we have achievement assembly on a Friday albeit virtual at the moment um, which recognises all talents um, from kindergarten all the way up to year 11 and everybody claps each other and celebrates that and it's absolutely lovely. Um, so we have certificates and postcards that are given out. Um, another question that came through uh, was about the benefits of an all through education um, and it might not seem relevant to you as an early years parent at the moment but we are an all through school which means that we have kindergarten to year 11 all on one site. We think it fosters responsibility for everybody in the school because pupils can take on roles throughout the school to mean that they have to be positive, they have to be a role model, they have to look out for younger pupils. Um, but they really enjoy supporting the younger pupils, in fact we, for the first time this year we've had a junior prefect and her responsibility is for helping the kindergarten and early years and other year, early years pupils come onto the site in the morning and develop a relationship with them um, and it's really it's just rewarding for everybody staff find it incredibly rewarding because they can see children who've come through our doors from kindergarten all the way up to year 11 and there's no greater feeling than seeing somebody leave in year 11 having, having been with us through that all through education um, and it's just really rewarding to see that young person with their great personality and exceptional grades walk out the door going on to the next stage of their life. It's lovely. Um, another question that was submitted through um, when, you, when you registered for Open Morning was about what the curriculum looked like, so I'm going to hand over to Mrs Coton. Our curriculum is broad um, and it's balanced and it addresses the needs and the talents of all of the pupils, our, our individual pupils on site. Uh, we follow core subjects as you'd expect to find in every school. The language that's taught from kindergarten upwards is French um, and then from year seven we also add in Spanish. These are both offered at GCSE too. Um, to enhance the curriculum we include philosophy for children from reception to year six um, because we think this develops pupils critical thinking and emotional intelligence um, and it's worth adding in there that because we're a small school our curriculum can be changed and tweaked um, year in year out um, if we want to add things such as philosophy for children. Um, we offer this philosoph uh, philosophical and ethical type thinking throughout Key Stage 3 and into GCSE where we offer religious studies um, based on Christian and Muslim ethics. Um, being part of an all through school means that we can use our specialist teachers from the juniors right through into the seniors um, for music, art, PE, drama, computing, French, um, are all taught by subject specialists and that starts in reception and some of those lessons even in our nursery department. Thank you. Um, a question that came through um, on the um, registration form was about what sort of support pupils get if they need extra help. Um, I'm sure you've looked at the staff list but if you haven't I'm also the SENCO as well. And the answer to that is what does support look, look like is different for everybody. Um, there's no doubt that quality first teaching is what should be delivered in the classroom to meet the needs of all learners. Um, but I do recognise that some pupils do need some extra support in certain areas. And what my job is, is to work with parents, with pupils, with teachers um, to discuss those next steps into support. We're a small school so we can be very flexible, we can also look at the individual needs um, and make an informed decision and sometimes that involves professionals outside the school, sometimes it involves just the teachers, the parents and the people in school but the answer to that is it looks different um, depending on the, the child and their needs. Um, a question that just popped in I saw was about assessment, I'm just trying to get to now, I think it says about what does assessment look like and what do we do if someone's where they, they're not quite where they should be and I'm going to pass that over to Mrs Coney. 
Um, assessment plays an enormous part of, uh, of, of life for children right from reception um, and we're assessing constantly, we're assessing our, our um, kindergarten children by the early learning goals. Uh, we also use a computer based program interestingly in reception um, and it gives us a fantastic idea where the children are in the first week that they join us in reception and then we repeat that again in the summer term um, and we get a really nice profile of how much they've learnt and it links in very nicely to the early learning goals. Um, junior pupils are assessed at the beginning of every year with baseline assessment, that's year one to year six. Um, that is a computer based program but it's also in-house assessments as well so we'll be looking at the curriculum that they have done and the curriculum that they're going to do um, and we'll be adjusting our planning for the junior pupils in line with that assessment. Um, that's repeated then at certain periods throughout the year. Um, teachers meet and discuss the, the results um, and we look at where we're going and that links into what Mrs Moon was just saying um, about children with additional needs or children who are actually exceeding. Um, the same happens for um, daily assessments, they happen with just general feedback to the children, it can be short assessments, they can be longer assessments and it's a complete mixture of informal and formal assessment throughout the day, throughout the week and then throughout the year. Um, and the other question that's just part three is about how do we know how our, our child is doing at school and it's a really co common question and um, we do we think we do this really well because obviously we're very small we're extremely open and honest and you're highly likely to see the early year staff on the door in the morning and in the afternoon um, where you can just chat to them and speak to them about how the day's gone every half term we offer a drop-in morning we haven't in the same way obviously this year because of the restrictions but that's what we're hoping to do once schools reopen fully um, and then you can come in and see the early years area you can see the garden you can see the work that's going on in the displays we have parents evening the same as all the other years in school um, and we talk about your child's strengths and targets there's also a weekly newsletter again that was redesigned really by the parents um, working with us this term um, because of the restrictions parents weren't able to come into school as they'd like so what we then did was a, a newsletter every week so you could see what your child was doing with photos so that you could see your child participating in, the, in those activities so there's lots of regular reporting regular times to come into school um, there's a portal system which you can log on and have a look at as well but we're always available to chat about your child and their work or anything else um, you know, we, have, we have a very open policy here um, another question that just popped through is how early do you start reading and writing I think that's probably based around phonics as well so I'm going to ask Miss Copeland to answer that well, we start phonics in kindergarten and um, there's an element of phonics every single day. Um, this will be rhymes to do with sounds, it will be recognising sounds, listening to them and looking at them. Um, then we move into blending in upper kindergarten when children are ready and in reception. And we provide lots of opportunities to write in kindergarten. Uh, there'll always be a writing area, it will be themed, it will contain pencils, paper, other exciting equipment that children might just be drawn to and want to experiment. And the very early stages of that are mark making before children actually move into recognisable letters and words. Um, they start the journey when they're ready to start the journey and, and they move to the next step when they are ready. Lower kindergarten is about equipping the pupils with the skills to be able to start the writing um, and their fine motor skills, learning to love writing, learning to listen to stories and to love stories. And we provide the opportunities to experiment um, either for a purpose, such as maybe a card or, or a, you want to write about your news, and then much more for creativity as their school journey continues. Yeah, thank you. Um, a question that we, we love getting, it's popped up quite a few times here, is about what does a kindergarten day look like? I mean, there isn't one answer to that, but I think Mrs Cope will try and answer it. <laughs> and I always start with every day in kindergarten should be a different day. Um, the days are different for a variety of reasons. It can be weather dependent, it can be topic dependent, dependent on the seasons and the time of year, or the interests and the talents that are displayed by the pupils, or the news that somebody's come in with, mummy's having a baby, or we've just had our baby or we've got a new puppy there's lots of things that shape your kindergarten day 
there is planning of course we plan to to achieve the early learning goals with all of our children um, we have phonics every day we have an element of number work every day and physical activities but like all good practitioners our early years teachers uh, seek every opportunity to further and, and develop pupils knowledge uh, and their understanding of the world by encouraging spontaneous curiosity so often those first five minutes with everybody on the carpet will shape your entire day in kindergarten. Thank you. And um, I think we've got time perhaps for just one more question. Um, someone has asked, why do we not offer ballet? I'm, a, I'm actually gonna um, summarize that question really and, and tell you about the clubs that we do offer. We don't offer ballet actually, because we find that many of our children or, or before they come to us have already started with ballet lessons in the area. And I think that's where they're best delivered um, because there is a longer period of time, there's other children to mix with. But we do offer a range of clubs and extra act um, extracurricular activities. Breakfast club is the simplest, it starts from 7.30 in the morning. Um, the junior school um, day ends at 3.30 but we offer tea time club till 6pm every night. But we have an, a range of other clubs um, and we're, we're extre um, extremely well provided with those. Um, they can include our staff or external providers. They could be cookery, street dance, karate, art club, gardening club, Spanish club, coding and a variety of sports clubs as well. Um, they're incredibly popular but we do ask that parents look at the website, have a look what we're offering um, and make sure that we, we you book in advance so we know about those um, but again if you see our website and our newsletter there's lots of details about those um, and these clubs also change every year and seasonally according to what the girls tastes are and to what's appropriate with the weather I think that's all we've got time for I'm afraid I'm sorry about that and I, ho I hope to I've addressed as many as I can there if I haven't I, I will get back to you about some of those questions um, I hope you found these FAQs um, helpful um, um, and what I could say is please just come and have a look around the school when it's, um, when it's appropriate and safe to do so because we can have a chat about your child um, and their educational journey at Brayside um, but also just to get to know us and our building and our pupils as well and I really look forward to meeting you soon. Thank you.